for us this time. Thank you. A circular conical reservoir vertex down has a depth of 20 feet and a radius at the top of 10 feet. Water is leaking out so that the surface is falling at a rate of one half feet per hour. The rate in cubic feet per hour at which the water is leaving the reservoir and the water is eight feet deep. Definitely would have to read that a couple of times, right? Definitely. But you start with the picture. And what are we going to draw? A cone. A cone. And, and where is the point going to be? Down. Down. So we're going to draw an ice cream cone. So draw your cone. And this cone is a container. And it has dimensions. And the height, or the depth as they call it, of this container is 20, what, feet? Is that what it is? Feet? Yeah. And the radius of this container is, is, is 10. What's inside this container? Water. Water. So, and what's happening to the water? It's leaking out. It's leaking out. So is its radius 10? At one point it was, right? Yeah. But now it's changing. So because it's changing, we have to call it a variable. Obviously we're going to call the radius of the water R, and the height just of the water is going to be H. You understand by my picture that H is just the height of the water, okay? 20 is the height of the entire cone. Okay, so now as I fuigi is when I get to start reading the problem over and over again. I always start with, what am I trying to find? It's always my first question. But she, she skipped over something when she read, and it's actually very important. What is this telling me? Cubic feet per hour. So what do we now know we're looking for? Volume. Volume. Because volume is the only thing we know measured in cubic units. So we are looking for dv dt, and we already know that it is cubic feet per hour. Okay, we've kind of used the first sentence, that was the 20 and the 10. Now here we go. Water is leaking out so that the surface is falling at the rate of one half. But what is that? Is that the radius? I'm hearing radius, height, and volume. I'm hearing all three things. It's the height because talk about something that's falling, so it has to be a vertical measure, not so much a, a horizontal measure. So we know that dh dt, and somebody else said it, is negative. And how do I know that this is negative? Because it's falling. So it's negative one half uh, feet per hour. And then what's my when moment? And what is that eight feet? Height. 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 So when H is eight. Okay? And now you need something that connects volume to height using our picture. Radius. And radius. Volume of a cone. They didn't give it to you. Say it again. One third. I don't know if you said the one third. If, I may, if you did, I, I just didn't hear you. Volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. There will be no tax formula charts on the AP exam. Okay? Know it. All right. Now, before we get going, think before you act. Imagine you took that derivative right now. We would wind up with the DRDT because we have three variables. We have B. R and H. In fact, what rule would we have to use to take this derivative? Product rule, which would produce a DRDT. Do we have anything about the radius? No. No. We don't know R. We don't know DRDT. So that's not a good idea. What do we need to do? We need to get rid of it. We need to find R in terms of H from the beginning. because We don't want to deal with radius at all. So we need to go back to our picture. And we need to think of some way that we can connect R and H so we can get rid of R. Uh, R, the radius of the original R, the radius of the new equal to the 
height of the original over the height of the original. Proportions, right? Yep. We're going to set up another proportion. And if you look at our picture, I hope you see we have an outer right triangle here, and we have a similar right triangle here. And there's many, remember, there's always like four to six ways you can set up a correct proportion. So don't freak out about which one to use. I'm just going to say that 10 is to 20 as what? R is to H. Okay. No, not 8. No, no, I don't want to use the 8. Why don't I want to use the 8? Is the height always 8? No. no. It's only 8 at this moment later when I want to find the value of the rate. You don't use 8, you don't use your when moment until the very end. Okay? Now, in this little expression that I have here, do I want to isolate R or H? I'm trying to get rid of R, so I need to isolate R. No, you want to isolate what you're trying to get rid of. Okay? So if I get R by itself by multiplying the H over, what will I have? I will have one half h, which I'm just going to write as h over 2. Before we take our derivative, before we do any calculus, we are going to replace r with h over 2. Okay. Let's find that expression before we take the derivative. Sorry about that. Okay. So as the teacher, I'm going to write this is h over 2 all squared times h, and then together we are going to clean that up a little bit before we take the derivative. You certainly don't want to have to use the product rule. Are the h's going to cancel out? Well. What do I get when I square my parenthesis there? H, over h squared over 4 times 8. Now remember, that's h over 1, so they're actually both in the numerator. Nothing's going to cancel. Okay? But I, I need you to clean that up for me a little bit. What could we call that? H cubed. What about all, everything else? I have a pi, I have an h cubed, but what number is in the denominator? 12. Okay, 12 is in the denominator. Okay, now it's time for calculus. Take the derivative. Take the derivative of everything with respect to time. Say that out loud for me. What's the derivative? 3 pi over 12 h squared times dh dt. But someone said 3 over 12, but somebody else could call that 1 fourth. Okay. okay, what are we looking for? Okay, what is eight? Uh, what is H? What was H? Eight. So eight squared is sixty-four. And what was the H dt? Negative one half. So without a calculator, I always say that because remember, you will not have a calculator during the entire test. Clean that up for me. What is the answer going to be? So it's clearly negative. In the denominator, we have... 8, so 64 over 8 is, is 8. So the answer is negative 8 pi. Um, something cubed per something, right? I know, that was my next question. Look at your answers. 
Let me notice. But it's something that to talk about. If someone already has called out the, the reason why, all of those answers are positive. Okay? And you might think we did something wrong. But we know we didn't because were we expecting the rate to be negative? Yes, because the water was leaving the tank. So the question is, what is it about the problem that is allowing us to speak back in positive numbers? It's the way they ask the question. Okay? They ask you the rate at which the water is leaving. They've already told you that they know it's negative. They've already used it. Does that make sense? They want you to just tell them how fast is it leaving. So in this problem, the answer is B. Okay? And that's one of those little tricks of the trade that you might see, you may not see again. But that is why. Now, it would be horrible if they had 8 pi and negative 8 pi in this problem, because then almost everybody would probably choose negative, right? But the way that they asked it, you had to stop and think. Okay?